the WNBA is in the midst of a changing of the guard. Sue Bird and Diana Taurasi have been two of the sport's preeminent faces for two decades. But with Bird retired and Taurasi in the twilight of her career, one player in particular has caught their eye as the guard who's got next in the WNBA. One of my favorite players in the league is Arike. I've said that before. Um, I think she's just so exciting. There's so much potential there, and she's really just getting started in a lot of ways. This episode of Building Blocks is presented by Intuit QuickBooks. Since captivating the nation during Notre Dame's national championship run in 2018, Arike Ogumbawale has been known as a walking bucket. For a trip to the national championship, Ogumbawale. She hit some of the most iconic shots in women's basketball history that tournament. And since entering the WNBA as the number five pick in the 2019 draft, has only kept her foot on the gas. Like, as a basketball player, that's the last person I'm gonna play against. Yeah. She's amazing. She's a She goes hard. Mm -hmm. She can. comes at your throat. She has that no one else has. A two-time All-Star and two-time All-WNBA selection with the Dallas Wings, Ogumbawale led the league in scoring as a second-year player in 2020. With her explosiveness and nasty handles, ridiculous shot-making and understanding of the moment, she's a living highlight reel. No performance was as epic as when she dropped 26 points against the U.S. Olympic team in the 2021 WNBA All-Star Game, taking home MVP in the process. So which former greats have influenced Ogumbawale as she's taken the league by storm? Talk to longtime WNBA fans, and there's one former player who constantly comes up as a comp, Kathy Pondexter. In fact, Pondexter herself has previously acknowledged the similarities between her game and Arike's. A two-time champion with the Phoenix Mercury, seven-time All-Star and 2007 Finals MVP, Pondexter had a lightning quick first step. The former Rutgers standout had tough handles that got defenders to bite and could attack the rim and hit off-balance acrobatic shots with ease. But you couldn't just assume Cappy was headed downhill either. She had the capability to pull up for a silky smooth J at a moment's notice. A prolific scorer, Pondexter retired in 2018 and currently sits at number six on the league's all-time scoring list. In short, some of the very traits that make Arike who she is. Agumawale may be known for her explosiveness, but her ability to pull the trigger from three makes her so much tougher to guard. That's something Naismith Hall of Famer Katie Smith, one of the best shooters in women's basketball history, would be fond of. Smith, an Ohio State legend, was a four-time champion, twice in the ABL and twice in the WNBA with the Detroit Shock. She finished her career with a 36.7% clip from beyond the arc and boasts the third most three-pointers in league history behind Bird and Tarasi, both of whom played long after Smith's 2013 retirement. That wasn't the only way Smith could score either. She could get to the rim and pull up from mid-range. In fact, one of Smith's most memorable baskets came in the 2006 WNBA Finals, a jumper with 14 seconds remaining that iced the Shock's second championship. And it was a step back, no less. Arike's got that step back in her bag too, with deep, Katie Smith-like range. Rike, quick trigger. Can't say enough. And now she has led Dallas this season. No conversation about Arike Ogumbawale is complete without mentioning arguably her most defining moment, her back-to-back -back buzzer beaters from the 2018 Final Four. The first to send home UConn in the national semifinal, and the second in the title game against Mississippi State. The Irish won the program's second national championship, and Arike won't let anyone especially former Bulldog Tierra McCowan, forget it. You're winning a championship, a college champ. Do you guys have a national championship? I remember actually beating her 2018, I think Mississippi State, I think we- Girl, don't think, I think you know. <laughs> Agumbawale won most outstanding player of that tournament. And even now in the WNBA, if the game is on the line for Dallas, you know who's getting that ball. Agumbawale's tenacious mentality and clutch gene harkens back to that of another Hall of Famer and Cynthia Cooper. The two-time WNBA MVP and three-time scoring champion whose legacy was further fortified by her ability to come through when her team needed it most. What did that look like? Well, a casual four finals MVP awards as the USC great propelled the Houston Comets to the only four-peat the league has and probably ever will see. Whether it was dropping 20-plus points in championship-clinching games, 
or hitting the overtime forcing shot in game two of the 2000 finals, one she said after the fact she knew she was going to make. No moment was ever too big for Cooper. At 26, Agumbawale has the bulk of her career ahead of her. Will she solidify herself as one of the league's best scorers like Cappy Pondexter and Katie Smith? Will she channel Cynthia Cooper and propel Dallas to the mountaintop behind clutch shots like she did at Notre Dame? Only time will tell, but there's little doubt that either way, Arike Agumbawale will produce must-watch basketball for years to come. So I'd like to welcome in ESPN analyst Andrea Carter to continue this conversation about Arike. Now, Drea, I know you've been able to call a bunch of Arike's games and see her up close over the years, but what comes to mind when we're talking about the play of this kind of superstar that we've seen back from her days at Notre Dame all the way to now in the WNBA? Yeah, I think the number one word when I think of Arike is fearless and fearlessness. Um, and really because I was in the building when she hit the shot to win the national championship against Mississippi State. I was in Ohio. I was actually the fan experience reporter for Mississippi State for the SEC Network's online platform. So I was just running around the entire tournament talking to Mississippi State fans. Um, so talking to them after, obviously, they were devastated. But that the Arike's ability to take the big time shot and whether she hits it or whether she misses it, the the fearlessness to step into that moment with confidence, game in, game out, year in, year out, I think from college through the WNBA, that's the word that comes to mind, like the fearlessness to make combo moves and double step backs and just carry the burden of um, being, it's a burden and a blessing when you're able to fulfill it, um, but being such a volume score, right? Like that's not an easy thing to do. Um, and so I think uh, the fearlessness to to do that and be that person and for every team that she's been on really comes to mind for me. And it's translated, like it's translated from college to the WNBA. And you don't always see that, especially with guards. I think that it's really hard to compete at the professional level um, against experienced veteran guards. So with Arike, I would just say fearlessness for sure. Yeah, I think that harkens back to what we were talking about earlier with how her kind of tenacity and her mentality is similar to maybe what we saw from Cynthia Cooper. Now, Cynthia Cooper was a four-time finals MVP, won four championships with the Houston Comets. So that is obviously a whole different level. But when we do talk about that comparison, when we do talk about where Arike's legacy could build from here, I think that where she continues to develop as a player at the wings, and if she can make them a contender and maybe even win them a championship is something that we'll be speaking about for the years to come. And I know with new wings head coach, Latricia Trammell, she's spoken about wanting Arike to be a vocal leader, to use her voice, that this is, you know, kind of her team now, especially getting that, you know, big contract that she's, uh, she got recently and wanting to also see her dish out more assists, become more of a two-way threat and develop in the defensive end. And I think we've started to see elements of that a little bit this season. It's been kind of tough though, because Dallas has been so injured. So is there anything that comes to mind for you too, when you've watched Arike so far with these new look Dallas wings or how she can continue to build her game under Latricia Trammell? Yeah, I think that championships is obviously the standard at this point, right? Like when you think about Arike, like she has had so many individual accomplishments and I actually got into a little bit of a, it's not an argument, just a little debate with LaChina and Carolyn. My um, hot take for the year was that a guard was going to win MVP because the guard hasn't won since like 2009 when Diana Taurasi won. And Arike is one of the guards that I feel like could do it right this season. And so that's, that's obviously still on the list for Arike. But even when you think about like being top five in scoring every year that she's been in the league, that's huge. She was on the rookie team. She was runner up as rookie of the year, like the individual accolades, the individual performances. She's you know tied with Maya Moore for 30 point performances. Like those are phenomenal names to be associated with in an individual standpoint, but you, you mentioned uh, Cooper and you mentioned, you know, I just mentioned Maya Moore, like what, what do 
those greats have and it's championships. And so I do think that is the piece for Enrique to reach that next level. Right. And it's, it's wild to think about because Dallas wins their first playoff game last season and Enrique was sidelined with an injury. And so she was like a part of that, but she's actually the only piece remaining from the starting group that won that game. Like all four of those other players, like Isabel Harrison is gone. Marina Mabry is gone. Alicia Gray is gone. Kayla Thornton is no longer on the team. Like Enrique is the piece that is left to build on that momentum last season and almost kind of recreate it for herself. Um, and I think that when I think about Dallas and this team that has now in my mind been built around Arike, they can be a team that in the next few years, they put together a run where they win two out of four years or three out of five. Or when you think of the pieces that they have, they're young pieces that in my opinion fit so well with Arike and her game in Diamond to Shields isn't healthy. You mentioned some of the injuries that they have, but Diamond to Shields has won a championship. Natasha Howard has won a championship, but they're young players that have won championships. So when I think about some of these other super teams, when you think of the New York Liberty, and it's not a knock on any of these teams, right? But we don't know how much longer we're going to see Courtney Vandersloot. Or when we think of the Connecticut Sun, we don't know how much longer we're going to see Dewana Bonner. She's won a championship. She's that veteran piece. When you think about the Aces, Candace Parker, we don't know how much longer we're going to see Candace Parker on the team. But when you think about Dallas and the championship pieces they have, you're like, oh yeah, we could see these, we could see these women for 10 more years. And you don't even think twice about it. So the young talent that Arike now has the chance to lead, in my opinion, like a championship will come to Dallas, especially if they can keep this group together. I think 100 percent And I think they'll have to kind of figure out the right balance between building around Arike, like you said, and her, she, you know, this is kind of her team. She is kind of known as this volume scorer, volume shooter. But at the same time, you have such amazing pieces in Satu Sabli. You have Natasha Howard. It looked like maybe they were going to be the new big three for Dallas. So I don't think Arike needs to do it all on her own, but I do feel like we could see the sort of situation where she's going to be that fearless person that hits the dagger shot to you know, advance to a finals maybe, or hits the game winner. Cause we've seen her do it before. And I don't think you can really even teach that clutch gene. It's just something that you have. And she had that in college and she should only be able to continue to, to grow or even, you know, utilize that moving forward. She can infuse confidence into other people. Like Arike is the type of person that like, she tells you your outfit looks good. You're like, my outfit does look good. Like, hell yeah, my outfit looks good. Um, So I think that you know, for her to lead, like we said, but also infuse confidence in her teammates, not just with the way that she plays, but the things that she says to them and the the trust that she has in them. You know, like in my opinion, every time Arike passes up a good shot for a great shot to one of her teammates, that's a confidence builder. And it's such a small thing, but it's really big for this Dallas team as far as building a championship foundation, you know? So I think that Arike is a, a huge piece. It's exciting. I'm excited for Dallas. I really am. She's one of those players that we're going to be able to see even more and more develop a, a presence off the court. It started maybe with those buzzer beaters that were just so iconic in sports history, but it's something that's even continued to grow from here. So where do you kind of see her uh, filling in in terms of the off the court presence that she could have throughout the rest of her career? Arike is one of the players that when you think about her brother being in the NFL, when you think about her passion and connection to soccer, right? Like in, was it just this past February, she met the women's national team and got her, got a soccer kid and she gave you know them a Dallas Jersey. And so like, when I think about the cross sport and cross league connections and respect that Arike has, um, that's incredible. You know, like when you have different fan bases seeing Arike come to whether it's a football game or whether it's a soccer game or whether it's meeting that team or when NBA players are coming to watch her play or NFL players are on the sidelines of her game like that cross league connection um, is huge right like that's how fan bases get introduced to the WNBA and it, it's such a big deal and it's it's one because of the person she is right she's so easy to connect to and talk to but two because of her game like there are 
NFL players who are like, oh yeah, I couldn't, I'm, I can't compete with her. Right. Like because of the moves she makes and how creative she is with the basketball. And I know she's giving credit to Milwaukee and, and growing up and playing there and like being showy and wanting to make the nicest move on the court. And that stuff translates like her game translates well to people that maybe don't understand some of the finer points of basketball, right? Like you and I, we're going to recognize every little thing that Arike does, right? Whether it's a screen that she says, and we're like, that's a great screen, right? But to someone that is trying to be introduced to the game, what's going to hook them to the game is not a screen. What's going to hook them to the game is a step back and a hesitation in between the legs and a floater, right? Or a, or a logo shot. or a, And so for Arike to have those moments and the confidence to make those moves, hit those shots, as well as play with her team and support them and have a winning team. Like it's not all about her, but she has those moments that just translate and that you kind of get sucked in on. And I think that as far as growing the fan base, um, Arike is a huge piece. Uh, and, and once the, once the fans get hooked to the flashiness, you appreciate everything else that she does on the court. So when it comes to growing the league, I think that Arike is huge. She's big in fashion. You know, she has connections in terms of fashion and she is so authentically herself. And I think that's the best thing about the NBA or WNBA is that, and the NBA too, is when really any professional sport, my favorite thing is when an athlete is authentically themselves like no matter what they're doing, whether they're on the court, whether they're off the court, whether it's their tunnel fit, whether it's an interview. And I think that we've been able to see the genuine, authentic Arike, and it's been easy to connect to her. And I think that will only continue to grow for her, but also for the game. This episode of Building Blocks is presented by Intuit QuickBooks. Manage your business with confidence. 